So today, we're going to be talking about the balance changes that is coming to Smashing 4. Smashing 4 has finally gave out, uh, get, uh, yeah, gave out another list of heroes that is going to be buffed and nerfed. And we're going to be talking about those heroes to see if the buff or the changes that, re uh, that they receive is good enough for the balance update. Let's see if this balance update is good, decent, or just bad. My name is To Mike, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Alright guys, so like I said, we're going to be talking about the, the, the balance update. We are going to be playing in the ladder for this, vi uh, for this video, since you guys don't see ladder videos that often. We're going to be uh, just you know, uh, just playing around in the ladder. So the first hero that we're going to be talking about is the Assassin. The Assassin, um, I don't think the Assassin has ever uh, received a balance, a, a balance update other than to change his ability to do a specific number instead of the percentages, you know? If you remember, if you guys remember that. Can we enchant the Frog Mystic here real quick? Can we do that? We completely missed. The Frog Mystic. At least the Frog Mystic took a little bit of damage. But let's talk about the Assassin. The Assassin will be receiving an 8% ability nerf. So, you know, at level 9, his ability does like 179 damage, which is freaking insane. This time, the, you know, 8% damage nerf, he is going to, the, num the number is going to drop like maybe 15. So he's going to be doing like maybe 162 more or less instead of 179. I mean, at least we're going the right direction. The Assassin was a, pretty much a spray and pray hero, meaning that all you got to do now is just hit your enemies towards the Assassin and hope for the best that you're going to be able to do something good here. What is he doing? Oh, never mind. He actually hits both of them. Well played. That was a very weird play. I didn't expect him to actually do that, but he got it off. Uh, can we somehow push the, the, the Priest towards the Naga? I don't think that's going to happen, but we're going to try. Not really, but we do heal up the Shaman and the, the Frost Fox right there. Alright, yeah, but uh, what do you guys think about the, um, the the Assassin nerf? In my opinion, the Assassin nerf was an A-tier hero for a long time now. The ability nerf is definitely a good change. Definitely needed uh, that ability nerf because the Assassin can basically two-shot like mo uh, most of the heroes in the roster. So that's it's pretty insane, right? It's pretty insane. So let me know down in the comments below what you guys think about the nerf. My opinion is a good change. And uh, while we're doing this, let's just, you know... Talk up, talk about one hero per match, and I think there's like ten heroes to talk about. So we're gonna be playing ten matches here. So I hope you guys don't mind about maybe potentially this will be being a long video. You know, uh, let's see if we can take out that priest once and for all. No, the priest does not get taken out, which means the frost fox and the shaman there, if they don't get pushed, he is going to deal lots of damage to both of them. And yep, that's going to be dealing a lot of damage to both of them right there. Oh, misses the shaman. Thankfully, missed the shaman right there. Alright, so let's actually just enchant the Kong here. This will hopefully uh, heal up the Frost Fox a bit. We completely missed the Frost Fox. Alright. Uh, this is definitely going to be a little bit of a long match here. Since we're facing a heal deck. He only has two rockets, which I'm not worried about. Uh, hits the Paladin the Naga. Okay, that's very interesting. I didn't expect him to do that. Alright, so now let's just enchant the Frog Mystic here. This should heal up the Frost Fox as well. We completely missed the Frost Fox from getting the heals. But all four heroes got enchanted, which now we now we can deal damage and heal up. He is going for the Kong to deal damage to the Frost Fox. Ooh. Right? Yeah. Okay, thankfully the Frost Fox does not get hit with the uh, the ability um the ability damage, you know? Let's see if we can take out that priest once and for all. We don't want the priest alive, so one less healer is always good. Bada boom. And the Naga, please hit Aww. No, but it's good because we took out the uh, the the priest, so that's less healer. If we can take out the um the frog mystic, then he won't be able to use the conch's ability, which is perfect. You know, um, he is going for the paladin and buff up the he missed, he thankfully missed um, buffing up or buffing yeah buffing up the rocketeer. I am struggling with my English. I do apologize about that. Um, uh, we'll do this. Hit the Kong as well. He left the naga. Let's see where the crickets are going to end up. Yep, he's going to have a tough time um, using the Kong's ability, so that's good. So if we can take out the the Frog Mystic, then we should be able to win this one with, with ease. He did take out the the Paladin right there, so I cannot heal up. Frog Mystic has 1300 health. Uh, can we somehow push the Frog Mystic towards the 
you know, the Frost Fox or the Naga right there. Never mind, we actually get a double hit instead. Um, Rocketeer only has one rocket. He is going to hit the Naga and the Frost Fox, considering the fact that the Shaman is going to get hit by the Kong's ability. And besides, you know, the Shaman did his job, so what's the point in going after the Shaman, right? Uh, what is he doing? I'm so confused of what he wants to do. Like, very confused. He buffs up the Rocketeer. Okay, so he actually buffed up the Rocketeer, so good for him, I guess. Uh, and we are actually uncomfortable here. We cannot hit the Frog Mystic, right? No, we cannot hit the Frog Mystic unless we do this. Hit the corner, and this should hit the Frog Mystic. There you go. We hit the Frog Mystic, healed up the Frost Fox. Um, so Kong cannot use his ability. So his saving grace is to buff up the, the Rocketeer as much as possible, if he can. And he'll be buffing up the Rocketeer here. Oh, actually, he did not buff up the Rocketeer. All right. So we got to know. It's just continuously take out the Kong. And uh, so that way, there you go. Yeah, he knows it. So there you go, guys. That is going to be our first win right there. That actually took a little bit longer than normal, considering the fact that we were facing a heal deck. But we got the first victory right there. Let's freaking go, guys. And now we're going to be talking about the second hero that is going to get balanced in the next match. Let's continue on. Alrighty, the other hero that we're going to be talking about is the Gargoyle. The Gargoyle is receiving a nerf. The Gargoyle's AoE, so his ability, uh, or the area of effect, I should say. So whenever he uses his, uh, his ability to heal up and deal damage, that radius is going to be reduced to ten, uh, reduced 10%. So um, since you know we're facing you know the meta where you just hit your own heroes and you win, seeing that change onto the Gargoyle is definitely in my opinion, good, because I'm tired of seeing, you know, just hit your own heroes and hope for the best, and do, you just do you just do good, you know? So, seeing the Gargoyle receiving a nerf um, that he did is, in my opinion, good. Let me know down in the comments below if you guys are angry about it, if you guys are happy about it, just let me know down in the comments below. Same thing with the Assassin. Let me know down in the comments below if you guys, you know, you see Assassin, are you guys happy about it, or are you guys sad about it? And right now, we're getting destroyed here. I guess we'll enchant the, the mice pen and then hit the paladin here. Okay, we're going to lose the naga here. We're definitely going to lose the naga here, um, I think. I think we are going to lose the naga here, which is very, very, very unfortunate. Hopefully he misses the assassin somehow, you know? And nope, he got it. And of course, he just destroyed my shaman and uh, Frost Fox got hit as well. Well, we're not winning this one. This is why the assassin needs a nerf. The spray and pray... It's just dangerously overpowered. Am I? Uh, it's just overpowered, dude. All right, so at least we were actually able to heal up the Frost Fox and the Naga just to keep them alive a little bit to see if we can actually somehow make a comeback here because it seems like we might not. All right, so I don't know if I should go for the heals here or just take out... Oops, sorry, about the notification. Let me get rid of that. Um, let me see if we can somehow take out his Assassin or go for the heal, man. No, because if I do this, then the Assassin... He's going to push the assassin towards my frost fox, and we are going to die. So let's do this and take out the assassin. No, that should have taken out the assassin. No. We're going to lose the assassin, or we're going to lose somebody. That's for sure. He's going for the paladin, and let's see where where the champion ends up because he might actually push a hero towards the assassin if he does this correctly. Hits the paladin. Okay, thankfully. Thankfully, he did not do that uh, very well, if you know what I mean. Um, I, I guess we'll hit the Naga towards the Assassin. That should hit, and then this should heal up the Frost Fox just to keep him alive long enough. Never mind, we did not even push the Naga towards the Assassin. Alright, so pretty bad right there. But it's all good. The whole point of this video is to showcase that heroes are got, that are getting balanced. And of course, we're going to be talking about one hero per match. So we're gonna play. We're gonna be playing ten matches. So this is going to be a kind of a long video. The Naga is going to die here. Um, thankfully, he does not hit anyone towards the or using the assassin towards anyone, which is good. Uh, this is unfortunate. Let's see if we can hit the assassin here and somehow somehow make the mice spendit hit the frost fox. Yes, we do. Not bad. And his assassin is still alive. Okay, and he can easily double hit the frost fox for the win. Or to take me out. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're not winning this one. We are not winning this one, ladies and gentlemen. 
Him taking out my shaman and dealing damage to the naga and the frost fox the way that he just did just destroyed me. So there really isn't anything that I can do there. So we're just, we're just going to surrender there, and that is going to be you know a loss obviously. So very unfortunate about that. But we still got a lot more heroes to talk about. So let's continue on. All right, the next hero that we're going to be uh, we're going to be talking about received kind of like a rework, so a buffed and a nerf at the same time. Uh, if you guys uh, if you guys agree with me with this. It's, we're going to be talking about the slime. The slime's attack power got buffed. So he, he was doing like 74 damage and it got buffed. So now he's going to be doing like 80 damage now instead of um, 74, which is quite, quite a lot. Not going to lie. For, for, for a hero that, 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 that enchants, is quite powerful. But his, um, his HP will be reduced just to kind of make up for it, I guess. So his health, it was like in the 500s, but now it's going to be dropped to like 480, more or less. Which is still not a lot in my opinion, but I mean, it's better than nothing, I guess. Honestly, in my opinion, the slime did not need to be touched. Maybe his health, his health needed, needed to be reduced in my opinion, but his, his attack power did not need to be touched. In my opinion. What do you guys think about the slime change? In my opinion, not the greatest. Only the health, in my opinion, needs to be touched. He just took out my freaking Frost Fox and the Paladin, so I cannot even heal up anymore. Ugh! Great. Great, great, great. Um, how much of the Sorceress have? 1,800. All right, so I don't think we're going to be able to enchant the, the you know, the, shum, uh, the Cultist right there. Honestly, not even necessary. The Cultist is almost dead. So I just need the Naga to stay alive somehow, and then we'll win. But yeah, let me know in the comments below what you guys think about the, the slime change. And he just took out my shaman right there, so I cannot even use the... I cannot enchant the cultist, which I guess is fine. Um, should we just go for the double hit here? I guess we'll try to go for the double hit and then hit the fire. We failed the double hit on the, on the sentinel. Well, I guess that's okay as long as he doesn't enchant the naga. If he enchants the naga, then we're going to lose. Let's see what he does with the giant. As long as he doesn't do anything too crazy. Don't enchant, don't enchant. We're okay, we're good. He did not enchant, which is great. Now, with the Sentinel going next, we don't want, the, of course, the Naga to be in the line of sight to deal damage to the Naga. So let's do this right here. There you go. Okay. Well, I did not want the Naga to land there because they can actually hit me four times pretty easily for the win. So that's going to be our, our second loss. So very unfortunate right there. Then again, I really don't care about winning or losing here. All I care about is just showcasing the heroes to you guys about the changes that we're going to be seeing actually later tonight. So stay tuned for that. Let's continue on. All right, the next hero we're going to be talking about, and this is the hero that we all despise, in my opinion, is the Ragnar. The Ragnar is also going to be kind of receiving like a rework, more or less. So instead of um, a rework, is like I said before, it's like... A, a buff and a health uh, and a nerf at the same time. So, the, his base damage, the Ragnar's base damage, is going to be increased 5%. So, basically, I think it's from like 46 up to like 48 or 49. So, not much of a difference, which is good. And his ability damage is going to be reduced, which is good. Because his axe is what, of course, makes him very powerful. His axe. So... His ability is going to be reduced 5%, and his speed is also going to be reduced 5%, so that way we don't see um, the Ragnar going crazy, going back and forth, hitting heroes and whatnot to activate his ability. Uh, do you like, do you like, uh, I cannot speak. Sorry about my English. I can't, I'm struggling, dude. He fails to hit any hero towards my, uh, or towards his assassin, which is good. Do I believe that the Ragnar's change is good? Uh... If it wasn't for the for the damage buff, I believe it's good. The damage buff was not necessary, but everything else was good. You know, they're taking baby steps to nerf uh, to nerf heroes along the way, which is good because we've been seeing the Ragnar ever since it came out, which is pretty annoying. So it's good that we are seeing these changes. No way the Enchantress did not get hit right there. He might just, yeah, he is going to buff up the, the assassin and deal damage to the shaman, which is going to be quite a lot. But my shaman is thankfully still alive. Uh, let's see if we can push the shaman to deal damage to, to the assassin to take him out. 
There we go, we do. And we also took out the tree, and perfect. All right, do I believe it's a good change? Yes, it is a good change. Despite the attack buff, it is a very good change. Let me know down in the comments below if you guys do agree with me that it's a good change because the Wumbo Combo needs to be addressed. And we already talked about the Gargoyle, which is paired up in the in the Wumbo Combo, and now the Gargoyle, or not the Gargoyle. Gargoyle got, in, uh, Gargoyle got touched, and now the Ragnar got touched. Very, very, very good. All right, so let's uh, let's finish out this match very quickly. Look at that. We just took out the Enchantress. Even though the Wraith is not enchanted, we should be able to win this one very easily with a nice little double hit from the Naga if we have a good angle. We actually don't have a good angle. The only way we can do this to actually take him out right now is to hit him directly and then make the Frost Fox hit the Wraith right here. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, perfect. So, I think that is two wins and three losses. Obviously, not the greatest, but still, I don't care. Just showing you guys the, the heroes that are, are getting balanced. As, as long as you guys are enjoying the video of me watching playing the ladder, that's all that matters, right? But, regardless, let's continue on. Alright, guys, this is actually our fifth, math, uh, fifth, uh, fifth match. What is going on, going on with my English? I am sorry, guys. I am struggling. Sorry, I am struggling with my English today. But... The next hero that we're going to be talking about is actually right there, the Sorceress. The Sorceress AoE is going to be reduced 10%. Um, sadly, you know, sadly, sadly, it's not like we're seeing any value changes. Instead, we're just seeing the AoE change, which is 10% um, reduced, his area of effect. Uh, do I believe it's a good change? Yeah, the Sorceress is actually quite strong, uh, if I do say so myself. So just seeing that change is pretty good. And hopefully hopefully it'll become much more difficult to actually make the sorceress enchant because whenever the, the sorceress enchants someone, your heroes just die super quickly. It's so annoying, dude. It's just so annoying. Like look at this. He just enchanted my Naga. So if you can enchant uh or just take out the sorceress as quick as possible here. Let's see, the sorceress has how much health? Uh yep, actually, yep. The We'll be able to take her out by pushing it towards the the Frost Fox right there. And there you go. Only the Naga and the Paladin are enchanted. And if we can enchant his Paladin and the Treant, we are going to win here. As long as the Shaman stays alive here. Yep, the Shaman is alive. That's good. Uh, we can't enchant here. We could, but it'll kind of be like a waste of a turn here. So let's just go for the double hit on the Paladin here. And who knows, we, we might be able to make the Treant hit someone. Never mind, he actually just surrendered. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our... I actually, I take that back. I think it was three wins and two losses right there. So not terrible. We're kind of okay here. 35, 80, 82. So we are kind of above from where we started in this video. We got like five more heroes to talk about. So let's continue on. Alrighty, guys. The other hero they're going to be talking about is the Mice Bandit. Now, ever since the Mice Bandit has uh, has come out, it, used, it was incredibly strong. And even with all the nerfs, I think the Mice Man is one of the heroes that received the most nerfs in the entire roster. And he is going to be receiving yet again another nerf, ladies and gentlemen. It's so absurd how how much nerf that the, uh, the Mice Man has gotten. His base damage, the Mice Man's base damage, will be uh, reduced 6%. So I think he already does like 60 damage, more or less, uh, his base damage. Uh, now it's going to be dropping 6%, so it's going to be doing uh, doing in the 50s damage, plus the ability, you know, at level 9, you know, damage plus the ability is still is still doing like 100 damage, so do I believe it's a good change? Yeah, the Mice Bandit is do, does, just does so much damage, dude, like even triple hitting a hero can basically practically one-shot some heroes, so definitely good, definitely good in my opinion, if you guys disagree with me just let me know in the comments below i'm very very interesting uh to see to hear you guys' thoughts right there all right so i'm just trying to focus on the sorceress because i don't want him to enchant my any any my any one of my heroes right there because as you can see we just lost a frost fox right there very unfortunate stuff can we enchant hopefully the sorceress and the robot and we also heal up the, sh the shaman and the naga and the robot uh enchanted that was huge uh the the huntress has a speed buff that's that's fine with me uh, if we can enchant the the ice queen i guess then we should be pretty 
pretty chill here when it comes to trying to win. Ooh, lots of damage though, lots of damage. I did not enjoy that. The Naga took so much damage. Can we somehow make the Ice Queen hit the Naga? That is going to be the ultimate question. Yes, we do. Let's go, dude. And the Huntress get, got hit by the, the Naga there. Uh, could we still win this? Honestly, the play that we just did onto the onto the Huntress and the Ice Queen right there, that was pretty good. But I think we just lost the Naga right there once and for all. Yes, we did. So now this is where we have to try to heal up the Shaman to keep him alive and just deal as much damage as possible. Let's hit the Ice Queen here. Heal up the Shaman. Let's see if we can hit the Ice Queen once again. Yes, we do. And the Huntress. All right. So there you go, guys. We healed up the... Shaman did damage to the Ice Queen and the Huntress. Uh, he's probably going to focus on my Paladin here. So that way um, the, I don't heal up my Shaman anymore. Paladin is still alive. Okay, there you go. The Paladin is actually still alive, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Um, I guess we'll just hit the, the Huntress right here. There we go. Nice, 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 nice. That was about 1,400 damage right there. That was good. Now we can take out the Paladin while hitting the Shaman. Yeah, I think he has a speed buff, which I'm okay with. Ooh, hits the uh, freaking hits the steam. That's unfortunate. All right, so let's see. The Ice Queen does go next, so she will be using her ability. But she's only doing like 100, 100 damage. I'm not too worried about it. I just worry about the um the Huntress, not going to lie. Should we just go for the double hit? I guess we'll go for the double hit here. This should be a double hit on the Huntress. There we go. Okay, there, there you go. We took out the Huntress. Now we just got to worry about the Ice Queen and the Robot. Now, the, the, the Ice Queen is doing her, you know, her ability. Thankfully, only like 480 damage plus like 100 damage that she's doing to me. Don't wait. You hit it towards the steam. Okay, thankfully, she did, she did not hit me towards the steam. Uh, let's see. Robot, 1800 health. Ice Queen, 117. 117. 700. What am I saying? Uh, let's see if we can double hit the robot and then hit the ice queen right here. If we can push the ice queen towards the the steam, that would be good. Bada boom! Oh my goodness gracious! The robot is almost dead. He basically has one more chance. Uh, he has two two bombs, so he's going to try to maybe push the shaman towards the steam and then let the bomb wins. <gasps> he just won, didn't he? Holy guacamole, the shaman is alive with 64 health. Ladies and gentlemen, that robot almost won. No freaking way how dangerously close that was. But we got the victory right there. Holy guacamole, I, I got so nervous. I thought he was going to win there. But let's go, ladies and gentlemen. 54 trophies right there for the win. Very good win right there. 36-36, doing really good so far. Let's continue one. Alrighty, the next hero that we're going to be talking about is the Sentinel. The Sentinel actually received a buff, which I'm actually very, very surprised. Let's see if we can push that Assassin on the way. I don't want the Mice Bandit pushing. Oh, actually, that's fine. The, because the Mice Bandit won't be able to use the Assassin that easily. But the, uh, the Sentinel is going to be used, or the Sentinel is going to get a, a ability a buff by 11%. And I remember when the Sentinel got a rework. The Sentinel received a rework in his in his uh, last update, uh, getting more health and, but less damage, and now he's getting more damage and his ability or his health is staying the same. So he is actually much more powerful whenever this update comes out. So that is a very 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 unfortunate. Why is he leaving? Um, or why are they receiving? The Sentinel receiving an attack buff. I or yeah, basically an attack buff. I don't know. I don't know why that's happening. That is so unfortunate. Uh, in my opinion, that was not the best play. The Sentinel is already quite strong, even though he is not being used too much in the you know challenges or in the ladder. He is still quite powerful, and just buffing up his you know, just buffing up in general is going to be very, very, very uh, difficult to face him whenever the balance goes live. So, in my opinion, not a good change. The, the Sentinel should have just not been touched at all. Uh, but let me know down com uh, in the comments below what you guys believe about this Sentinel buff. In my opinion, definitely not a good change. Alright, so let's see if we can win against... Uh, thankfully, you know, his heroes are just weak in general right now. And look at this. We can actually just take out the My Spinner here. Or should we just... Actually, just trying to push him towards the Paladin. And that should be for the win there. And there you go. Sadly, we hit the werewolf, activating her ability. I wanted to wait, 
But sadly, we hit her by mistake. So he's going for the Naga for sure. Since the Naga... Yeah. The Naga... Okay, that's a lot of damage. Let's just try to... Well, there's no point in healing up the Naga considering the fact that the... Even if he healed up once, the Naga won't survive um, the Warrior's attack. But we did lots of damage to the Werewolf there. Now the Werewolf is, has 1100 health. Still healthy. Takes out the Naga right there, of course. Now if we can double hit the the Werewolf and push it towards the Paladin, then we should be able to win. Oh, never mind. I thought, I thought the Shaman went next. Let's see if we can get a double hit here regardless. And push it towards the Shaman. Let's go. All right, so we took out the werewolf, so now we just gotta worry about the warrior only doing 140 damage, and the shaman only has 26 or has 2600 health, so we can tank lots of damage right there. As long as he doesn't push the shaman towards the fire, because right now he can actually one shot the paladin, I think. I think he can one shot the paladin right there. Can we get another hit? Thank you! So he basically has one more chance here, and he surrenders. Let's freaking go, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, like I said, Sentinel buff, definitely not the greatest idea in my opinion, but I can only give input and let me know down in the comments below what you guys, uh, if you guys agree with me or not. Let's continue on. Alright, the next year we're going to talk about is this probably the most absurd balance I've ever seen. Blaze. The Blaze, she is receiving a 30% ability damage. So not her base damage, it's damage whenever she burns someone. That's the buff that she received. 30%. Now, me as a beta, uh, beta tester, I uh, I told my concerns to the you know to the Smashing Four team, and uh, they're gonna be talking about it with uh, with the developers, and hopefully this change actually does not happen because the Blaze receiving a buff at level nine, she already does like ninety four damage. She's going to be doing hundred damage in one hit. Like that's not that's not smart in my opinion that is very not smart uh, let's see if we can enchant the tree once and for all or should we just focus on we'll heal up the shaman but i don't think we're going to be able to either enchant the tree or push the enchanters towards the naga to take her out oh never mind we actually took out the enchanter so we don't need to worry about him enchanting his heroes anymore which is good but yeah uh blaze receiving that buff that is not it. That is definitely not it, ladies and gentlemen. I do not agree with that. Uh, let's see if we can just... I don't think we're going to be able to get a double hand the Seder, but we're going to try. He surrendered. Let's go, dude. All right. Easy win right there. Let me know, let me know uh, down in the comments below what you guys believe about the Blaze buff. My opinion, that is not the play, but you might. You guys might be Blaze users, and you might be happy with the, with the update right there. Let's continue on. Alrighty, the next year we're going to be talking about, and this is actually quite a pretty big buff, not like the Blaze, but it's still quite a huge buff overall. We're going to be talking about the Wizard. The Wizard will be receiving both um, damage buff and HP buff. So his damage buff is going to be increased from, I think, I think he does like 60 base damage. And now it's going to be increased to like, probably like 68, 69 more or less, which is absurd like why is the wizards getting buffed now i i agree you know the uh, and of course the the wizard is um receiving a health buff and i get it the wizard is, is kind of squishy i get that um his health needed a little bit of help but i do not agree that the wizard needed a base or a damage buff i highly disagree with that ladies and gentlemen I do not agree with that at all. Now, if you guys are Wizard uh, fans, I used to be a fan of the Wizard, like, years ago. But, you know, like, he was very squishy, very difficult to use because of how weak he was when it comes to health and whatnot. But he was still very powerful just because of his ability alone, dude. Like, his ability is so good. We just still got the Wizard right there. Um, But, yeah, getting that damage buff... And the health buff, we might actually be able to see the wizard a lot because of his splash damage. The splash damage is what makes him incredibly powerful. So let's see if we can see some some wizards going uh, going around, you know, running amok and whatnot, you know. Uh, let's just take out his blaze right there when I want the, the blaze alive. And there you go, he surrendered right there. Alright, so let me know down in the comments below if you guys agree that the wizard definitely needed that buff. Or that was a little bit too much. In my opinion, a bit too much. A health buff was okay, but not a damage buff.
The damage buff was definitely excessive in my opinion, but if you guys are a Wizards, uh, Wizards fan, props to you. You guys are going to have a very good deck. But uh, we're going to be talking about one more hero, so let's continue on. Alright guys, we're going to be talking about one more hero, and this is actually a pretty huge change, because this is part of the Wombo combo, and that is the Spellwing. The Spellwing is actually receiving a major nerf. This is actually a huge nerf for the for the Spellwing here. Now, you guys know the, that the Echoes, back in the days you could get unlimited Echoes, and I, I, think, I think it was unlimited. Now, you can only spawn two Echoes per turn so no more hitting the spell wing to get like five or six echoes per you know per turn you can only get two echoes maxed that is what i was hoping for for such a long time ever since the spell wing came out because the echoes is just freaking huge man such you know changes that the spell wing can do because of his echoes only being able to spawn two per turn is actually a huge deal the spellwing will definitely not be as powerful as it was before, and that is something that I'm actually looking forward to. So there's that, and not only that, but his uh, the spellwing's ability um, is going to be receiving a nerf. So his heals and damage that he can do whenever you you know shoot heroes or his own heroes towards it, he is going to be receiving a nerf nine percent. Uh, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. The spellwing is going to be receiving his, you know, his echoes nine percent to deal less damage and to get less heals. That is good because I am tired of seeing the wombo combo and him making a comeback because of this freaking spellwing. And that is something that I'm very, very happy to see whenever the update comes live. If you guys use, if you guys use the wombo combo, I am so sorry, but I'm very, very grateful that the wombo combo. It's not as strong as it was before. Let's see if we can take out that robot right there once and for all. There we go. All right, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you guys uh, think about the, the spellwing receiving this huge nerf. This is actually a very huge nerf for the spellwing. And I'm very, very happy to see. Uh, like I said, I am very, very happy to see this, uh, this nerf. Very happy. Uh, let's see if we can... Get, let's see if we can get a double-handed knight here and then hit the skeleton towards the shaman. Hitting the hitting it towards the shaman would be huge. Uh, yes, we do. Ah, we missed the shaman. But hey, we did damage the skeleton. That's all that matters, I guess. The shaman only has 300 health, and the uh, skeleton is. I mean, well, if he takes out the shaman, that's unfortunate. But um, let's see what he does here. This is very unfortunate because. If we take out the phoenix, or if, sorry, if we take out the skeleton, then the skeleton is going to get revived. So it honestly does, does not matter here. We just gotta take out the phoenix here. Oh, actually, the phoenix is actually still alive. That actually might be a good thing. Because then he won't be able to revive the phoenix. And we just need one shot with the naga to take him out, if unless the naga dies. Let's see if the naga dies here. Because a, a double hit will... Is the naga still alive? The Naga is still alive. Okay. Um, he can take out both of my heroes in one hit. Does not matter which heroes. So, can we get a double hit here and make the Naga go up to, towards the skeleton? Nope. We lost. Unless he misses the... Actually, the, the, the Shaman can survive one steam hit. Unless he revives the, you know, the, the Phoenix then, of course. No, he's actually going for the revival. I'm actually very surprised about that. He is going for the revive. Okay. So there's that. Let's see if we can push the phoenix towards the naga. At this point, we just got to try to take out his phoenix, I guess. If we can hit the skeleton, even better. But I completely miss pushing it towards the naga. Well, that's a horrible mistake of me. I did not mean to do that. I was trying to hit it towards the naga. So that's going to be our final loss. Our final loss, unless we can figure out a way to make the Shaman just deal crazy damage to all of his heroes right here. So, like, for example, the Skeleton, we need three hits. The Phoenix, we need three hits. So, how, how can we hit his heroes three times? Definitely not happening. I can just double hit the Skeleton here. If try, uh, at least try to. There you go. Miss the Phoenix. It's all good. All that matters is just showcasing the... Um... These changes right here, I think in total I, re I got like 6 or 7 wins right there. So honestly, pretty decent run. 
while talking about the balance changes, ladies and gentlemen. And we actually did go up in trophies, which I'm very happy for. We just re we just lost a maximum amount of trophies right there, so that's very unfortunate. But guys, that is a balance update. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think about it. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And if you did, please make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel for more Smashing 4 videos. If you guys have any other recommendations that you want to see, just let me know down in the comments below and I'll see you for you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video and thanks again for your continued support. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.